Hello everyone and welcome to another video about ServiceNow functionality. <laughs> Your host for today is uh, me, Goran Lundqvist, and I've been playing around with ServiceNow for a couple of years and love doing videos and try to show how to use ServiceNow as the best practice as possible. So let me start by sharing my screen. There we go and let's put that little picture of me so you can see I'm for real, I'm not an AI bot or something like that. So today we're going to talk about uh, Glide AX calls. As we all know that in a client script you can use Glide record calls if you want and get reference calls, but it's not, it's not best practice. It will take a lot of performance from the client's computer and we also know that if you want to reuse stuff, script including Glyax is the way to go or perhaps have a, the scratch pad, but that's another topic. So what we're going to do today is if we, for example, go to incidents and let's just pick one. So what we're going to do today is that while it's loading like that, if a user fills in a configuration item like uh, This one, if we look at that record, we can see that it has a support group oops, called database. And we would like to, when they select the configuration item, the system will go in, fetch the support group and put that uh, assignment group. So for the first thing to do, let's create the, the client script. And for that, we also need to have a script include, which will be the next step after the client script. So let's leave this one and let's create one. Let's call it, let's rename it to like a custom get support group. And we would like to have it on change because when they change the configuration item field, this one should trigger. So first thing to do is let's create the Glide Ajax calls. New Glide Ajax and I have, have a script include. Let's fetch that name because I use that for other client script which I made on the community to help out. So the script include we're going to call is called Acme Client Script Utils. And we want to like to add a parameter. Let's make a function called get support group. Oops. Let's do like this. First, it's the sys 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 parm. Always forget these ones. What's the name of the function we're going to call? It's called get support group. And we also would like to send in the parameter of the, the new configuration item, the value of that one. So let's call that this palm CI this ID. And we would like to send in the new value that is set on the field. That's about it. And then we do a GA and we get get XML and we don't use get XML wait because then the, the the browser will freeze until we get the response from the server. So when we get the response, we'd like to put that in a callback in a function. So let's name that to set or sign group. And below let's have a function function assign group and the response <clears throat> and just leave it like that for now. So the client ask calls goes into this script include, looks for a function called this one and also sends in the value like that. And this one is pretty much like you write a dot query when you write the client record calls that you send away the information. So let's just save this one. So let's go in and I'll 
copy that one. Let's hit the script include, open that in a new tab. Here is the, the script include I created. Remember to always have the client cobol checked, otherwise you can't use it in a client script. So, and here is the other function I made for a community thing. So we called it get support function. And let's do it like that. And so what we want to do here, we want to go into the CMDVCI, fetch the CI record, look at the group and return that one. And we're going to do it in two steps, first a simple way and then a little more advanced way. So first, <coughs> as you can see on the client script, we had this parameter sending the new value, uh, sysid of the CI. So let's do that. Let's var uh, ci equals this dot get parameter, and we want to fetch that one. So now we get get ci. Let's do a glide record call. And let's say that if we well, we know the record exists because we already set it in a client script. So let's say get ci dot get, and it's ci is the sysid you want to fetch. Then let's let's make a check if there is a database or is a support group. So if get ci dot get. Support, yeah, what's the name? Let's see, support group. Mm. Let's just take a look at the, the server. So get the right one as well. And come on. The field name is called support online group. Let's go back to the client script. So support, if there is a value, then we like to return just the sysid. I'm going to show you the, the negative part of just doing like this. Let's return it like this. We can make this curly a bit smaller, but I'll keep it like this for now. Else just return. So, and we'll save that one. Now, if I go back to the client script and we just do a, for fun, alert, no way, we need to have the long one here for the answer. Let's see that var answer equals, and I'll just copy paste this one because I always forget it. All right, always response dot so, and we'll do like this alert answer just for the fun of it. Save. So if we go to incident, let's duplicate this one. Incident dot do. Oh. And we'll fill out the PS Linux. We get alert with the sysid of the support group. So what we just want to do now is perhaps do a check like if there is an answer. G form dot set value assignment group and answer. Save. And here comes the bad part because you will notice that if I reload this one, 
and there was the PS Linux one, and it's database. But <clears throat> what happens now is since we only sent the sysid, and with set value, we only set the sysid here, the server does another server call because it needs to know what kind of display value does this society has. And it kind of works like we can actually do like this and just like my cool group. And since I, with the set value, also set the display value, it actually doesn't care what the display value is when I do it here. My cool group. Test one. But you can see, oh, we need a caller, we'll put Abraham on the phone. But as you can see, when I saved, it's only saved the sysid. So when the page reloads, it's fetched the real one. But of course, we would like to have the real one from the start. So let's go back to this one. So we would like to return the easiest way would be an object. So let's do this, return group. And when you start getting the hang of it, you can make more and more dynamic methods in the script includes where you can use like, not only send in the sysid, perhaps you want like to send in what field you want to fetch from the CI record, for example, and not only just return the support group. But that will be another video for doing that. But let's return the group. <coughs> And then we'd like to say, just excuse me. So, so we have return group dot value. That should be the same as get ci dot uh, do, 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 get value support group. Then we also would like, let's copy this one. Say that return dot display value should be the display value of the field. And then we return turn group. But since this is an object, we can't just return it. We need to do some JSON magic. So let's Let's do that. JSON dot string if I like that. Let's make it a little magic one and we'll save that one. And then of course, <clears throat> when we get to the client script, we must do the same. So let's find that one. So dot parse. So now our answer is actually uh, an object instead. So then I will say that the value of the set value will be answer dot value because that is this one. We're setting the value from the support group. And then instead of typing like that, you just type answer dot display value. And we save. So if I, let's, uh, do, 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 let's do another new one, just to see it from the start. And we take yo for the start, and we take the Linux one, and you got the database as well. So this is a, a quick and simple way how to use the Linux calls to fetch information instead of using uh, Glide record calls from the client script or get reference. Uh, the bad part is even if you use get reference, which is kind of a, in a gray zone, but the bad part about get reference is that you get every field on the record and you don't get the displaced values. So in this case, you would do a get reference, get the sysid, put the sysid in the assignment group, and then ServiceNow will say, hey, I don't have a display value. And then they'll go and fetch that one. So we have two server calls anyway. So that's about it about the glass calls. So stay tuned for more videos from me and see you later.